Early this morning, Italia took its window of opportunity to rapidly intensify, becoming a devastating cat for hurricane. It is just about to make landfall and will be bringing life-threatening impacts to much of the Big Bend area in Florida before making its way through other states. We also want to take a look at other systems out there. We've got a tropical wave moving through the Caribbean as well as four more systems to watch in the Atlantic Basin. And before I go into details, Please do subscribe if you haven't yet done so and tap the bell so that you never miss an important video. All right, so we're going to be kickstarting things, looking at our other systems out there. We're not going to be spending much time because we want to focus on what's going on with Idalia. And so here we are. We've got Franklin out there. It is still a hurricane, a cat too. And that tropical storm warning is still in effect for Bermuda. Let's go on to it. And here we can see that blue marking represents the tropical storm warning so it's going to be passing by the island but that uh, tropical storm force wind field is pretty extensive and is likely to result in the winds across the island coupled with that storm surge and maybe even some periods of rainfall as well and then eventually it's going to become post-tropical as we head to the end of this week going into the early part of next week then there is tropical depression 11 which isn't gonna last long it was expected to become jose but it looks as though it wants to hang on to the that tropical depression title but between franklin and depression 11 there is the remnants of gert i don't know if you guys remembered gert over a week ago uh the remnants are actually still around and now marked with a 10 percent chance of possible development and then the next area we want to look at is the coast of africa where there is a tropical wave given a 60 percent chance to develop over the next seven days and so we can see that some of the activity in association with it is making its way through the cabo verde islands and so uh aside from the those areas for now nowhere is expected to be impacted by it should it become a depression which seems pretty much possible as we're going to be heading into the next several days and so going into the caribbean now we can see that there isn't anything too crazy happening there is that tropical wave moving through not expected to develop and we're seeing that it is not producing a whole lot of activity either but there is some shower and thunderstorm activity still lingering in parts of the lesser antilles especially the windward islands which experienced quite a bit of rainfall in some areas yesterday day but for most other areas we don't see where there, is, uh, where there is anything too much going on this morning. All that moisture in the Western Caribbean left behind by Dahlia and uh, resulting in some thunderstorm activity near the Cayman Islands as well as in parts of Cuba. Now, as we look at the rainfall map for the Caribbean as we head throughout today and into early tomorrow morning, we can see here that the most rainfall activity is expected for parts of Cuba going over into the Yucatan and even uh, down in parts of Northern South America and potentially uh, Panama as well. So the different spots in those areas could experience some, some substantial rainfall as we head throughout this time period for most of the caribbean much isn't expected maybe an afternoon shower popping up across parts of jamaica hispaniola and uh maybe even some intermittent showers across parts of the lesser antilles especially the windward islands for the abc islands unfortunately much is not expected either now going on to the main deal of this video which is idalia so here we have the powerful hurricane so it took advantage of its window of opportunity as i mentioned earlier and now it is a cat four but as we take a look at the close-up infrared satellite there we can see some of those shades of blacks and those grays and purples indicating the areas of the most activity most of that heavy rainfall the strongest winds but notice just how cloud filled the eye is so that eye that was clearer in the earlier frames becomes uh, less prominent and that is because it's undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle so it's basically when that current eye dissipates and a new one forms to replace it and when that happens there's usually some fluctuation in intensity before the cycle is completed and it takes some time as well to do so but because Idalia is going to be moving inland it's not going to get the opportunity to form a brand new eye because once it moves in it will be cut off from its source of fuel and energy which is the very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico so it's going to be moving over land and thus will be rapidly weakening as it does so but not before bringing those life-threatening impacts to especially the Big Bend area of Florida, which have already begun. 
since yesterday some areas again feeling impacts from the hurricane and here we have it now closing in by the time this video is posted it may have uh, made landfall and so other states such as georgia and the carolinas will be feeling impacts as we head into tomorrow so it is not going to be lasting very long that's the good uh, the good news about this it's not like this is going to be lingering around for another two three days in the same general area no it's going to be moving out fairly quickly and it's currently moving to the north northeast at 18 miles per hour so as we look at this cone forecast here we can see that it has pretty much prompted so many watches and warnings that hurricane warning for parts of the uh parts of the south coast of south carolina going to georgia and even that hurricane watch in effect as well and then for over parts of the eastern side of florida there is that tropical storm warning and then that hurricane warning over in parts of western florida is for the middle of longboat key northward to indian pass including tampa bay these are the areas that will experience the worst of idalia as she moves on shore so that devastating storm surge which is caused by the winds of idalia pushing the water on shore up to 16 feet above ground level that is absolutely insane and i'm saying it from now with the kind of intensity that this has bearing down on the state this name will be retired next year usually when we have these devastating events uh, with these tropical cyclones the name is retired and replaced with another name of the same letter and gender so there will be another i female name replacing idalia so i'll be updating you guys on that at the time but for now the retirement isn't the issue it is the impacts that are bearing down i hope that person have heeded the warnings because now there isn't much left to do other than to ride out the storm so that devastating storm surge the very strong winds because this is a cat for hurricane we're talking about it is sustaining winds up to 130 miles per hour with higher gusts and i actually expected that it would become a cat 4 even though the nhc was a bit conservative at first with the expected intensity but eventually they were showing that hey it's gonna be uh cat 3 cat 4 at the time of landfall so i was expecting that before and now here we have the cat 4 uh, hurricane that is making its way inland and it wasn't just a matter of saying okay this is going to be a cat 4 i'm not wishing a cat 4 on anyone at all but uh the environment is super conducive it was super conducive to allow for the kind of intensification that we saw happen early this morning because i mean last night the winds were 110 miles per hour and now they're at 130 30 miles per hour so some significant intensification in a short amount of time and we've seen this happen with many previous systems ian ida laura we've seen it happen with so many gulf hurricanes so this year was no exception with idalia but it's as i said it's going to rapidly weaken but still going to be a problem regardless especially going into parts of southeastern georgia going into south carolina parts of north carolina with those impacts that tornado threat is going to increase and uh there's also going to be that heavy rainfall which is likely to trigger flooding across some areas and then eventually as we head to the uh latter of this week going to friday the cyclone should make its way further from the u.s and it could be in close proximity to bermuda so here we have this little change here in the uh expected track of it but we're still talking about something several days out from now so there is likely going to be some more changes with this track and so guys that is what we see happening this morning with idalia with our other systems out there and then of course uh, we could see some additional developments coming from the main development region as we head into next week but i'll be keeping you guys posted on all that is happening and all that is expected and i'll be going into a lot more details as we head into this evening's updates and future updates as well so that is it for right now i hope you found this video to be quite informative but if you have any questions please leave them in the comments i'll respond once i get the chance to and as always remember to be otherwise